is Dean. I'll be here for the next hour, hour and a half, and then I'll be gone for the weekend. Hopefully, depending on what happens in Ottawa, but welcome to the show. Uh, lots going on today. We've got uh, a state of emergency to talk about uh, here in the province of Ontario. we got people using kids like human shields. we got the ferryman looking for hot love on Tinder. Uh, we have a whole crew of people coming in today, including Ryan Lindley from the Sheeple Shepherd podcast. We're going to go through some Zello stuff because that's coming to an end. Uh, and why don't we introduce a couple of people who I happen to love having on the program every single time uh, she's on. I get excited to see her. Karima Saad at Karima Rules on Twitter. Nice to see you. And of course, Hi. she's in Ottawa and uh, the state of emergency in Ontario was announced today. Doug Ford announced that we're going to talk to you about the reaction on the ground. <laughs> it's the best. Also, Marianne Iveson. She joins us. She is a uh, former broadcaster, now current podcaster and content provider. She lives in Ottawa. Last time we talked to Marianne, you had split to go up to an Airbnb somewhere because you live really close to where the honking was. Now the honking's done, and I can see your home. You're home, right? Yes, oh, um, I was home, I think, the last time we did the show, but I had a bunch of bags around me, so maybe yeah. you didn't recognize. Oh, I was literally leaving. I was about to leave yeah. like the second after, um, but I came back on Monday night, and I've been here all week, and I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the carnival of a weekend of what's gonna, how it's going to go down. Yeah, I guess it's this weekend. Carnival's right. Uh, you said earlier, too, you're like, I've just accepted that it's happening as opposed to fighting reality, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> so there was actually this moment and I would uh, that happened this week. So I borrowed some skates, uh, some long blades to attach to my cross-country ski boots to go down to the canal and skate on the canal. It's a very Ottawa thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, OK, I'm going to go down. It was I think it was Wednesday morning, eight o'clock in the morning. But I have to walk through the convoy I have to walk through the occupation to get to the canal unless I want to really detour around I'm like no no I can do it so I was walking down and there's a few people out pouring coffee and they were just waking up and I decided because I've been so fearful of it I've been so um it's kind of taken over my life the last couple of weeks that I went and stood right in the middle um of the convoy they're all you know all facing all the trucks are facing me and i just kind of i said good morning to everyone i just said good morning and hello <laughs> i clearly didn't belong i had my buff up i had like my skates in my hand uh and everyone said good morning it was a very peaceful moment and it took away a lot of the power that i feel like it had over me and i know mm. that a lot of it um has been some of it has been peaceful for sure the illusion of peace um but from that moment on, and also, uh, you know, $180 in psychology appointment, um, I've been feeling, I'm feeling better. So, <laughs> Well, I mean, you're, you're not alone, right? I, I, I hear that from a lot of people, whether you're in the Ottawa area or whether you cover this stuff. Like I have some friends that are reporters from MSM. So does Karima. I had one friend tell me he's got to have to take a long break after this because it's mm -hmm. legitimately fucked with his brain, right? Like it's you know, the idea that, that these people, these insurrectionists, you could walk right through the insurrection, smell the 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 mm -hmm. a breakfast in the air, say hi to them, and they say hi back, and you can go on your merry way. It's almost like there's really no issue until we internalize the issue, right? And I think it's bothered a lot of people too, Marianne. I don't think you're alone. I think the main problem I'm finding is that I know there's so many more layers to this right. uh, that are above this, that are in, pa that are in power, yeah. that uh, make that are threatening and that are scary. I think that's the bigger problem. And the bigger problem is that it hasn't felt like law enforcement. It hasn't felt like the government has been taking care of us and taking care of its residents and its citizens. So I think that's a bigger problem is that they don't have, it doesn't look like they have control and they've admitted that they have lost control. So mm -hmm. that is a scarier part is, okay, well, if things actually happen, maybe that's this weekend or who knows when it happens, like will the citizens of Ottawa and people surrounding, will people be protected? And I think that's the bigger issue. Yeah, um, it is. And it's the biggest issue, I think, that faces law enforcement, every level of government, which is like, what is this going to look like? So Karima's here. She's in Ottawa. She's got to split and go do MSM for 10. She's going to come back. But I want to ask you about that state of emergency this morning. Uh, Doug Ford called it. I've actually got the video here. Ryan was kind enough to throw it up on. Uh, I got a couple of videos of Fordsy because he was all time today, <laughs> by the way. He was really good. Uh, but this is him calling the state of emergency. Watch this. Today, I'm using my authority as Premier of Ontario to declare a state of emergency in our province. And I will convene Cabinet to use legal authorities to urgently enact orders 
that will make crystal clear it is illegal and punishable to block and impede the movement of goods, people, and services along critical infrastructure. Okay, so we uh, a bad volume. We don't need to uh, get into the details because Kareem is here and we're pretty versed on the details. But um, what did you think of the announcement? Because what I heard Karima, and then I want to get to the reaction of the people that you kind of canvassed this morning out in Ottawa when you went to the convoy. But uh, what did you think of the announcement and uh, how is it being received in Ottawa right now? So, I mean, I think that he had to do something and you know, there's this perception, and I think it's a fair perception, that he was sitting back and allowing this to play out and, and really removed himself from the equation, even though all of this is happening in the province of Ontario. Um, now, and to Marianne's point, you know, she said, and I hate to interrupt you, that's why I'm following this up. Marianne's point was, you know, it'd be nice to see the police do something because we feel unsafe. Now, this is an opportunity for the police to do something. I don't mean to interrupt, but go ahead. No, no, not at all. And the thing is, though, did we need a state of emergency to deal with this? Is that the only way that this could have been resolved? And what I find troubling is um, Ford's stated intent to make some of these measures permanent through legislation. Um, and I think that that, you know, we we all we've had the conversation many times about the disparate enforcement by police and how that can be weaponized against groups when police don't align themselves or sympathize or agree with what's being protested. Um, so that part concerns me. And, you know, I, I go back to the fact that we're not talking about hundreds of thousands of people. Um, this is, you know, relatively small groups. And I think that law enforcement actually does have the tools at their disposal. And what we saw was a either a decision to not act, and there may be reasons for that that we're not privy to, or it was just a, a failure to take this seriously, and then the situation got out of hand. Um, so, you know, good on him, I suppose, maybe, not really, kind of, no. for doing something, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a, it's a little, it's been two weeks. Yeah. Well, well Ottawa, it, sorry, Lorai, go ahead. No, I was going to say, Ottawa has been, like, Ottawa Police Chief has always said right from the get-go, there isn't a policing solution, there isn't a policing solution. When we saw clearly in Toronto, there was a policing solution that was peaceful, and there wasn't a lot of arrests, not a lot of people got hurt. Um, I have a feeling that I think it's, it's, it's the, re it's the, the, the way that they responded and it almost feels like they're trying to be defiant in cleaning this up. And mm. I don't know if Doug Ford maybe finally was pushed to the point where he had to do something because they wouldn't. And that's kind of what, that's where I feel in the, getting the OPP involved, the RCMP now, it, it gave them the resources, I guess. And now I guess slowly doesn't really have a, an excuse, uh, to not act because he has the resources he said he didn't have. Yeah. Well, and, and I wonder who, where the resources come from. Like, uh, you know, when this whole thing started, they, they were like, the Ottawa cops are like, Hey, we need some help. We're not getting any. And, and my understanding is, is that there have been numerous requests to the provincial uh, leadership to get that help. And there have been numerous requests, Karima, from federal leadership to get Doug to help. And he has refused to sit down with any of those people. So my understanding was today was more about him saying, Hey, listen, here I am. And I got a real heavy, Krista, Kayla, get out of the convoy while you can before I send in the big guns. Did you kind of get that too, Karima? Because no, I'm, I'm being serious right now. Yeah. And the reason why I'm saying that is because he is so incredibly compromised because his daughters are 100% in on this movement to the point where they're with the convoy. This is Krista tweeting uh, that her and H train, her husband, law enforcement officer, who's helped with logistics with this thing. Um, has put this out and been promoting it and talking about the convoy and the new world order and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I love the caption. Life is great. Honking is great. But my point is this. Do you not get a real feeling? And Kareem, you and I have talked about this. Do you not get a real feeling that this is a major problem for him? Uh, and, and, and it's a major, major sticking point because in that press conference, he said this and almost started crying when he said this is tearing apart families as well. 
Do you yeah, think that Kristen Kr- Kr- and Kayla, go ahead. This is a huge sore point for him. Um, and it's funny because uh, I, I get feedback sometimes that maybe he's in cahoots with Krista and this is a way to sort of keep the the extreme fringe on his side. She's sort of like they're an emissary of sorts. Um, and I don't really get that sense, to be honest. Um, I, I think that it's more likely that his reaction to the pandemic um, and, and his policy decisions have been affected um, insofar as not wanting to lose his daughter and, and you know if the rest of the province suffers so be it i guess um that's that's the impression that i've got from from the premier mm. yeah uh, that's what i got too because i don't know if you saw the start of the press conference uh marianne what he said was if you are a fringe member of what's going on with this get out now and if you have kids get them out now because this is coming to an end in the next 42 hours so um, to me, that was a warning, right? That was a warning to his kids. That was a warning to anybody who uh, has gotten caught up. Because I believe there are two camps here, if I'm not mistaken. I think you got the overtly religious zealots, uh, who, by the way, last night, let me play you this, uh, by the way, were, were anointing Canada as now God's property. Here's This is from the Windsor Bridge last night. Watch this. It's great. Not all of you are Christians here tonight, but you've been blessed by our Christian forebears that founded this nation. We need to repent as a nation, stop setting ourselves up as gods, stop allowing the state to act like God, and we need to acknowledge once again that the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ alone is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he has authority over every principality and every throne. So, <laughs> I'm having a hard time connecting the dots. I'm having a really hard time connecting the dots right now and how this all links together. Ask me a question. I'm happy to connect all the dots for you with great language. Uh, I also would like to point out too that this is how it feels. I don't. I don't know exactly how what they're thinking. But now that I have family in Windsor, like my parents are about uh, 40 minutes from Windsor and like no doubt they're seeing and taking it a little bit more seriously. My brother um, is unable to work. He works at a place in Windsor. He was unable to work today because the parts didn't come in. Um, so it's starting to affect other other parts and other people in, in our province. So my question is, like it feels like being in Ottawa, it took actual international borders to shut down and for millions and millions of dollars affected every day for them to actually do something mm. and kind of let us just again it's just how i feel um for them to be like oh well maybe we should probably maybe take the carnival and and the and whatever's happening in ottawa seriously it feels like it, it yeah. took two like why did it take 14 days but i understand how important the ambassador bridge is and the fact that they shut it down but i'm also it also just feels kind of like a slap in the face like i guess we'll do something now Mm, yeah, Karima. Do you know why I, I get? I got a feeling from that press conference that this has been like everybody's wanted to kick the ball over the other guy's fence to make him deal with it. Do you get that too? Absolutely. It's you know, uh, police don't want responsibility. There was an OPP officer I spoke with the other day um, who was here doing his job, I guess, but you know, let it slip that he thinks Justin Trudeau is a liar. And it's not like I had to prompt for that. And he kept reiterating that protesters have a right to protest. And, you know, I'm not really enforcing the Jerry can rule, but I'll let the Ottawa police know if I see one, and then they'll take care of it. Um, So, you know, bringing in more police is only a solution if the police who come in are going to, you know, discharge their duties. Um, and I will say that like happening right now live, there is a concert on a flatbed outside Parliament Hill. Like they're singing, they're dancing, they're putting up LED lights for tonight. This is like the state of emergency has not been taken seriously um, up to this point. I don't think that they believe anything will happen to them. What do you mean? Like they're, they're, they're all, this is a clip that you put up. I imagine that this is what you're talking about. This is, uh... 
This is uh, them putting putting on a big show. This is after the state of emergency was called, right? So have you yep. gone down and talked to anybody about how they feel about it? They they clearly look like they're enjoying the state of emergency. And what's, yeah, what's I mean, indifferent. Happen. There's an indifference to this and a sense of, and, and probably this is the result of weeks of being emboldened um, by non-action from police or what's perceived as support. Um, and, and the idea that nothing's actually going to happen to us and we're allowed to stay. Mm. They're, they're, they're dancing to Kesha in the middle of the street. I'm holding a Super Bowl state of emergency in my garage on Sunday if anybody wants to attend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and here's the thing, is they're all going to get done. Like, these guys are all going to be in deep, deep shit, and they don't care, right? And, and when you go and talk to these guys and you say, hey, state of emergency, how do you feel? That's just generally the answer you get. Like, we don't believe in the laws of this country anymore. Is that not the feel? Yeah, they, they feel righteous in being here and in thinking that somehow they are standing up for democracy by attempting to subvert a minority right. government. That's that's how they genuinely feel, even though it's divorced from reality. But then again, many of these folks don't believe there's a pandemic. So no. how do you actually reason with that? It's cult. It's a cult I love those mentality. Words divorced from reality i, I believe uh, ryan you have some some information from the front lines in Winter, windsor speaking of divorced from reality is that correct it's uh it's crazy uh i don't know if anybody's listening to those zello chats uh, mm -hmm. that are going on but um i've infiltrated the one in windsor and i uh i've been in there for a few days now and today um, and it's funny, they literally, all they do, it's, it's worse than you think when it comes to that divorce from reality, like she, like, uh, Karima says, it's bad. Like it's, they are, they've been breathing in their own farts for like 12 days now. Right. So, and they're drinking bath water of each other's filth. And Can I play a clip? <laughs> yeah. Karima's got to go. You, you go and then oh. come right back. Karima's got to mm -hmm. go do, uh, do another interview, but she's going to be right back. Thanks, Karima. Appreciate you. Love you. Uh, let me play in just a quick clip. Marianne, you'll love this. This is a, this is a clip. The, the, so Zello, you all know what Zello is. It's a CB app that all these people are using as like a, a dedicated channel. It was part of their deal. They thought it was encrypted. It's not. And like, it, is, it has been legitimately two weeks of like Ryan sending us in DMs clips of these guys being infiltrated by gay porn songs and yeah. like <laughs> Ram Ranch and some of the funniest shit yeah. you've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, but but this is not funny. I, I mean, we put up this picture of those kids yesterday. I don't know if you saw this. This is them using mm -hmm. uh, children to blockade uh, the Windsor Bridge. This is <clears throat> all. And again, you can see the beautiful young girls and their beautiful young boys and they're being forced to do what their parents tell them in the name of the Lord. Um, but these guys are now, now that, that, that we've put the heat on them with pictures and the, and the state of emergency is coming, they're like, get the kids out. Watch, listen. They're sending an alert out, but clearly that doesn't work. I don't know. Um, but uh, let's, uh, we need to remove all kids from the area and prepare for worst case scenario. Um, there might be worse things coming than, than we think. Yes, please get all kids out of there now. So that's cool, right? Bringing kids to an insurrection, which is really cool. Um, this is another one. I'm sending an alert out, but clearly that doesn't work. I don't know. Uh no, never mind. That's the same one. We'll go to Ryan with more information. Ryan. Yeah, I, I'll expand on it. So that guy that's talking there is one of the administrators of the, of the Zello chat. And this is the first glimmer of of reality like like touching back down to earth i've seen uh or heard sorry and it's him because the guy that's speaking is uh from what i can understand he's a paramedic and uh he works in the sarnia lambton area uh yeah they talk a lot about their own personal lives even though they think they're anonymous it's really bad and um he <laughs> is also a member of uh the reserve uh canadian forces yeah and he was uh, involved in a conference call with his commanding officer um, this morning uh, who were trying to see how many troops they could rally to get to the Windsor Sarnia area in the next 24 to 48 hours. And so he went on there as a leader of this group who has been on the front lines and pleaded with everybody and said, guys, listen, I don't want to give up. I don't look at it as a give up. You know, maybe we can do slow rolls again instead, but we can't block the border. They're looking at labeling us domestic terrorists. That's what the emergency act was in invoked for. And 
literally try to bash it in their heads like guys this i have the proof that and they were still blaming mainstream media he's like you fucking idiots i'm telling you i've got the e like i've got a memo here i can't read all of it because he, he was he was redactive and he said i will just tell you just go just go we'll regroup and we'll do something and they are so deep in their own shit no, i'm not going anywhere i'm not mm. going anywhere i don't mm. see anything right now and then all of a sudden you heard you, i sent you the other one where yeah. they witnessed 18 OPP tactical force unit vehicles coming down the road. They're, they're, that, that's just a scare tactic. That's like yeah. the media. That's what they're just... It's like, no, you fucks. They're literally surrounding you right now because that's why they're getting more... Like, this is... And I feel bad for people like Marianne because you guys have been dealing with it for the longest, but the priority is the border. And that's what mm -hmm. they're going to do money. with this emergency act. It's the money. And, that's going to uh, piss you off as an Ottawan is like they 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 in a sorry i don't mean to make mm. your day worse <laughs> sorry, your my heart rate just escalates during this whole thing uh, sorry but it's gotta like it's i was thinking about it today because i was watching ford's press conference he's like mm. the economy the economy and the economy and money and the economy and trade routes mm. economy trade routes u.s mm -hmm. and, and someone's like what about the kids and he's like yeah yeah but the economy the economy the economy and there's like what about ottawa yeah that's fine but the economy, right? Mm -hmm. Like as an Ottawan who's been like severely distressed by this whole thing, hearing that money is more important than your safety or your your mm -hmm. liberty has got to piss you off. Oh, uh, I feel like I'm I've been so ragey that I kind of um, I'm tired. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kind of tired. Uh, and at this point, I like. Uh, yes, it does piss me off and it, it's upsetting. And like I said a few minutes ago that, of course, now they're helping now that the border is being shut down. But I also understand being from originally from that area, I understand um, how important it is to keep that bridge open and how terrible it is to be blocking it right now. So there's a part of me that understands. But also I'm like, you know what, if this is the thing that shuts it down here down the road, then Who so cares? be it. I'm 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 mo I'm mostly just at like acceptance and let's just like let's just get this over with. I don't care how you do it. Just like just get yeah. it done and hopefully no one gets hurt. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a frustrating one. I think compounded by the fact that during his press conference he was called out because pictures uh, all over the internet of him going <laughs> um, snowmobiling all weekend and uh, up in Muskoka with his buddies and some OPP officers. But he was asked about it in his press conference and he, and he shrugged, shrugged off the question once and then tried to take the question a second time and look at his face. Look how angry he is talking about it. Fair enough, but you're not dismissing what I'm saying here. I'm asking you, Premier, <laughs> were you snowmobiling on Saturday in cottage country when Ottawa was under siege, as you say? Let, let me tell you, Colin, I was at the cottage. I went out on my snowmobile. I take calls <laughs> till one o'clock in the morning. I get calls before six o'clock in the morning. That's right. And I will not stop snowmobiling. Until we get this taken care of. Right. I will not stop snowmobiling. <laughs> I will not stop snowmobiling. I, Blue tooth in my helmet. I, I was taking else. calls. I like. Is it okay? Back to back to being so far gone that I don't even care. I'm like, okay, this guy just wanted a break. I don't even care as long as he just do something. I'm like, you know what? He just like even if he was on his snowmobile, just like yelling into the phone. Like I don't, I don't even care at this point. I personally don't care. He's doing something now and. Uh, like looking back on it, there was so many mistakes made that just that's just more stressful. So as of right now, just like get something done and let's move forward. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a it's a it's a tax for him. It's a it's a pattern. Every single emergency we've been through in the last two years, he's responded <laughs> right? poorly to. It's <laughs> odd. It's almost like he's not made to be a premier. <laughs> it's fucking hard to believe. Like you know, and, and I and I know we haven't seen anything going on over the past little while. Like I know that you know we're just talking about you know Ottawans not seeing action barely. Like when did you get home? A few days ago? A couple yeah, days Monday, ago? Monday night. Yeah. All and, right. You okay. Got home. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Marianne, talk it, to me. It's Friday. Okay. So Monday night, get back, uh, feel pretty good being, it was, it's quite quiet. The, the, of course that young woman, uh, helped put the injunction in place. I can't believe it took her to do it, but like, yep. she's just a hero at this point. So the, you know, the honking stops, uh, I feel so, so much better for the, the residents of Centertown, but it's Monday and I'm like, okay, they, uh, now like it's, it's, it's smaller again. It's a, uh, it's a smaller presence. So most of the honkies went home. So now it's time. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, like now they can move in and they can get rid of them and they can tow them. And then again, I don't understand all the inner workings, but like, okay, are we going to let this happen another week? There's no chance they're going to let it happen another week. It's Friday and they're having a, a concert. So the <laughs> fact, the fact that they're like another weekend of this is happening yeah. is, is I, there's so many, there's so many parts of this that the human brain cannot wrap their head around whether you are from Ottawa or whether you're from anywhere in the world at this point, looking at this and how embarrassing it is, Mm -hmm. is um, it's, it's hard to even wrap your brain around. So the fact that we're going into the third weekend of this and they're still down there and they're still having a concert and they're still celebrating is not, fathomable like it's not uh it doesn't make sense it's not it does, like there's no part of me that is understanding what is happening oh you're not alone uh <laughs> you, you, like you know it's it's and, and i've had to dig 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 like we've played uh a whole bunch of clips for you of people using their kids and there's a real a real religious bent to this and if you asked me to sum this up, according to the things that we've been putting out, the content and the people I've talked to with national security and law enforcement and people involved, is that this is really an Americanized, alt-white, religious extremist movement that has, that has co-opted the anti-vax community. And so there are a lot of good people out there that just refuse to get vaccinated for a million reasons. And I, I, I and I don't agree with them, but I do agree with the fact that people shouldn't be forced to do something if they don't want. But at the same time, should be able to live with the consequences of those decisions. Right. Well, the the, the alt right Americanized religious extremist portion of this um, has co-opted that any goodwill involved in the anti-vax community and they've hid inside it and acted like truckers and decided that this is how they're going to make their stand against secular Canada. So you've got a whole bunch of people kind of jammed into this mix. You've got religious extremists, you got anti-vaxxers, you got the cognitive cognitively delayed, which is like science for just technically stupid uh, you've got all kinds of people that are involved in this, but they all share one commonality and is that they don't like being told what to do. Right. Um, so that's what you're seeing. And, and unfortunately, because there are so many extreme parts of this, there are so many national security issues involved in this. The embarrassment for all levels of government has been so intense and we take the freedom to protest so seriously, nobody wanted protest blood on their hands. Like, they didn't want the optics of it. They didn't want anybody. But but now that it's time to get going and 90% of Canadians are like, uh, where are the batons? We've, we've got an appointment across the border that we can't miss tonight. Uh, we've got a fundraiser in Ottawa we can't miss tonight. Where are the helmets and where are the shields and where's the tear gas? LFG. That's kind of where we're at. And the reason why those trucks are still there in Ottawa, and it's a fascinating story. Do you remember last week when tow truck drivers were asked to come and tow those trucks and they declined in Ottawa? The doxing and the threatening of people in the tow truck industry by this movement in the last two weeks has been astronomical. We're so, witnessing that in that Zello chat as well when that AM PM towing in Windsor showed up and all of a sudden it was phone them, phone them, phone yep. them. Tell them we're never using them. And yep. they, and so they, it's like, yeah. and, and, and the other thing is, is that this entire group has been uh, like literally calling in fake 911 calls, trying yeah. to take up like uh, really important essential resources for people who may actually have an actual emergency. So it's like th- this has been well planned by some bright Americanized hyper religious Christian extremists, and it has been co opted by some of our dumbest. And they've covered their bases, which is why those things are still there. Marianne, can, can you cover the um, connect the dots for me on now that we're seeing these? Um, these American politicians and the Fox News of the world uh, mm. covering this and having so much interest in it, that is like the biggest of red flags for me yeah. possible. The fact that they have so much interest in this. Um, you know, I have a very, like, very basic understanding of what's happening. But if you can, can you connect those dots of why there's so much interest yeah. in, 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 in these protests, not just in, like just across 
across yeah, Canada? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I, from my understanding is, okay, you've got a couple of different outlets that are really driving this across the United States, right? You got Fox News and you got Breitbart. Well, Breitbart is owned by MAGA Nation, Steve Bannon, who's going to jail. And their interest is in creating um, some kind of uh, some kind of hyper religious alt right state anywhere they go, and, and their their goal is influence. Their goal is to show people how powerful they are. Right now, they're in bed. Maga Nation was in bed with anybody that will help them achieve the alt right goals that they want to achieve across the world. This isn't just a, a, a United States thing. This is a global thing. There are a couple pretty big dictatorships that you could consider to be alt-right. Russia would be one of them. So there's a common interest in in shitting on NATO countries. There are similar protests like this that have been planned by Mike Flynn and the rest of his cabal of QAnon fucking wieners who will all go to jail at some point. Trust me, they will. Um, And the goal is to destabilize a whole bunch of NATO countries and make it look like uh, we are doing the same thing they are doing, so we're in no position to dictate the terms of morality in the world. That's well, the, why this is happening. Well, the fact that this has been happening for, for 14 days and we're um, an international embarrassment at this yeah. point is, exa- is exactly... Um, is exactly well, and the goal is to, the goal is to, to legitimately embarrass... Justin Trudeau. The goal is to legitimately embarrass Canada, and um, they've they've managed to succeed. Hey, listen, this has been a pretty successful thing. Kareem is back from doing MSN. This is way more fun, isn't it? It yeah, was no, Jim Richards. I, He's fun, but you guys, you know, it's oh, Jimmy, not really I love Jim. It's Jim's not a fair a comparison. Jim is a good no, guy. No, it's not. Jim Richards is one of the good ones. I love Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just talking about uh, connecting the dots to the alt right movement back into why these people are doing this, and it's it's legitimately, and that's why Fox is there. They're not there to cover this. They're there to help, right? Just you to push. and you've posted a whole bunch of stuff about Fox, including I think there was some kind of fight or something like that, Karima, today in Ottawa. Yeah. So this guy shows up, um, and you know he had a mask, but it was off, and big smile on his face, and was basically trashing Fox News, um, which I applaud. And I missed the altercation so supposedly and i take this with a huge lump of salt because i heard it from one of the convoy occupation supporters um supposedly there was either a punch thrown or coffee thrown at the reporter and he used this black man supposedly used a racial slur against the white woman i don't know what that could have been um he did not elaborate on that but in any event um the counter protester was escorted away by police, not arrested, doesn't look like they were detained, but just moved out of the area. Um, so it, it is, it's, it's provoking a reaction from people. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and what do you uh, make of Fox? I, I was just saying, I think they're there to help. Obviously they're both alt-right and they've got an agenda. How have they been covering it in that way? You know, I haven't actually been watching their footage and I think maybe I will. I'm not very, I don't often have a stomach for Fox. Um, but you know, I guess I'll have to suck it up. Um, I know that there was, um, this video of, you know, a 78 year old man supposedly who was honking his horn and then got arrested. Um, and it was a pretty sort of an unpleasant takedown. And, uh, to my understanding, that guy was on Tucker Carlson. So I think right now they are (laughs) mining for stories and content that can be, um, kind of twisted or used. Um, they're, they're just looking to see, you know, like vultures, um, what they can, can make out of this. And like that, it concerns me because there's a lot of, if not vulnerable, um, easily sort of misled people who are milling about on the streets. Um, so it's, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, really. Mm. I'm not an expert, but I believe when you resist arrest, it yeah. doesn't go well. Okay. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Because yeah. if you watch that video, that man resisted arrest. And yeah, yeah. he was subdued the way police subdue you when you resist arrest. So, <laughs> Well, the police, what they didn't do is look in their handbook for how to, how to, how to detain a 78-year-old white or, guy. Or, right? yeah, oh, yeah, or a white guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they 
they thought Fox News thought that, that's why yeah, they're making such take a big it easy deal on out the of white this. guy. Yeah. Well, no, that's why they're making such a big deal out of it. Oh my God. Krima, you're going to say something? I was going to say that exact comparison was made um, between this guy who, yeah, shouted at the reporter and, you know, uh, debatable whether that's appropriate, not appropriate. Is that cool? Not cool. But I also like there was footage that I shot yesterday of um, a CBC reporter being encircled by dozens of people who then started chanting so that he couldn't be heard over like the microphone yeah. and you know, we're, we're accosting him basically once his, his piece was done. Um, yeah. So like, it's very inconsistent and, you know, it, it's tiresome to point out the hypocrisy, but it's just, it's everywhere. And, mm. and I think it's important to keep doing it because otherwise, you know, we, we cede control of, of that narrative. Mm-hmm. One of the things, uh, apparently, we, we've got uh, some information on what happened. Ian said there's uh, video footage of We'll try and find it. Uh, apparently, the guy that was mad at the Fox reporter yelled, quote, go home, bitch. That might be so, my footage. He did do that. Is that your footage? I don't know if that's what he saw, but I, I did record that. Then you saw that? Okay, good. I got to find We got to get that. If we can, Chris, if you can grab that for us, that'd be great. I want to I wanna play that. Um, but <clears throat> back to, uh, you know, the the idea that that this is being covered properly uh, by Canadians and because I don't think it has been uh, according to what we've seen on, on MSM CTV has covered. This as a trucker rally and mandated rally. And they're now only now after 14 days starting to kind of clue into what this is. It's a fucking insurrection. Not one of them have called it. Um, but one of the things that I've found gross over the past couple of weeks is the martyrdom of reporters by themselves. Uh, have you guys noticed that there was a clip the other day of a, a CTV truck and someone taking the decals off the CT, the CTV decals off the truck saying it's a sad day. We, <laughs> you know, we've never, never, never had to do this in our lives. I, I, do you have any sympathy for them? I don't. And I find it self aggrandizing too, or grandioso or whatever you fucking call it. Self aggrandizing. That's the best word. Um, I find it just pathetic in some ways. Do you? Um, I uh, I guess like I'm I'm more a little bit close to this because I have friends who who are reporters in the mainstream media and I know they're um, a little bit more 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 scared of this. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I have sympathy because I'm close to it. Cause I'm sympathy because these people are people that I love. But I understand where you're coming from on that too. Yeah, Karima. <sighs> I, I mean, I don't know if, if it's like, a, I don't think anyone should be harassed or intimidated or scared to do their job, right? No. Um, so like on, on that level, I think, you know, I, I do sympathize, but also I feel that the situation may not have escalated to this point um, if there was more rigor in the way that media covered not just events like this, but but everything that led to people losing their faith in in, in the institution, um, and you know that happened gradually over time. I don't know that we can pinpoint uh, any one incident or individual, um, but collectively, I, I think there is an understanding that media has its own interests and those interests don't necessarily align with truth seeking and people caught on to that and you know are swept up in other institutions now that also don't have their best interests at heart but put on a better front Mm. um so like that's you know it's it's almost it's unfortunate because it's a situation that you know, didn't need to transpire and is maybe out of the hands of individual journalists, but the cumulative effect of the past few decades and especially sort of the concentration of um, ownership, uh, I think, has really undermined trust. Mm. Can I, can uh, I ask Karima, yeah. can I ask Karima really quickly, how, um, how have you been able to be there for so long? And maybe you can say that, maybe you can share stories of it not being so safe, but how have you been able to infiltrate it for so long and feel comfortable enough and safe enough every day to get all of that footage and for them to trust you? How has that, how has that been accomplished? Uh, I, I mean, I don't go in with a big camera or a logo on my back, right? So mm-hmm. I look like 
a normal live streamer and if someone doesn't recognize me, which most people don't, um, it's not an issue. Um, you know, often I'm there with my cameraman who's a white guy, um, you know, and, and so that kind of provides cover in and of itself. Um, and I, I, I am approaching people who seem like they want to chat, right? I'm not like necessarily chasing the hard folks. Like it's, you know, if someone's approachable and they want to talk, then great. Um, and I, I'm just inquisitive. So, you know, I, I, I like to think that that all leads to people feeling comfortable. I try to make people comfortable. Um, but yeah, it's not always, it's not always safe. Um, there have been other rallies, you know, where I've been literally chased out um, and felt like it wasn't worth returning. Because there's so many people here, it's just a little bit easier to hide in plain sight. Yeah, blend into the yeah. crowd. Yeah. yeah what and if I'm we like, get if yeah. music? I'm going to be bopping along, right? Like it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. You no, know, yeah. I'm not unless I'm shooting a promo. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, it, if, it's you try to blend in. What if we get you a big pink CTV toque? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the colors. What? That's it not is. I just want something bright. That so is not on it. brand. That is not on brand. <laughs> just so, just yeah. if anybody from the mainstream media is watching, um, that stunt that CTV pulled by doing that and then taking pictures, the woe is me pictures of taking mm -hmm. it off, um, didn't do what you thought it did because, A, that wasn't directed for the safety of your employees. That was directed to... It was grandstanding. It, yeah, it was, it was creating, so creating attention. Because yeah. the first thing that happened when that post came out in the Zello chat, because when you're deep in it, you get to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing they're saying, guys, guys, media's taking stickers off their trucks. Everybody, uh, a little more uh, <laughs> eyes on the fucking parking lots, guys, guys. And like like that. Yeah. So That's maybe, the problem when you brag on Twitter to a couple million people yeah. that you're taking the stickers off your white Astro maybe, van that everybody knows the stickers that. are off the Astro van. You know? Oh, so, man. It's so transparent what what it, that was, and it was it yeah. was a it was a hashtag, help me or whatever. Yeah. you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, uh, like, like woes us, feels, like woes in SM. Look yeah. at us, and, and you know it's easy to curate that vibe because these are, as Marianne has pointed out, I have friends that are involved in this. It, not just Kareem, I've got like actual other friends too, not just one friend. <laughs> I only have one friend. Just one. Yeah, you only have the one friend. <laughs> Just these one are friend. human. Sing. These are human beings trying to do the job, and they thought the job was something else. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. the job that their uh, corporate uh, masters have done over the past, as Cream has mm -hmm. pointed out, forty years have led to all kinds of mistrust. Not only that, every single cell phone that is in the crowd in Ottawa is probably paid to one of those companies as well. And everybody's been on the phone with those guys, right? Uh, can I get your name, birth date, information? That's probably why they're pissed. They're probably pissed that they had to get passed over to a new person at Bell or Rogers when their phone thing, because they gave all that personal information and then had to do it again when they accidentally cut off. That's it. That's why these guys are mad. That's Can it. we talk about that plug for the? Um, it was. It was. I don't think it was on purpose, but it was the Bell um, dish. It was the satellite dish. Yeah. <laughs> For because oh, yeah. they want to watch the Super Bowl this weekend. Yeah, it was Kareem's picture. Um, Kareem, what, what, what did you see? They, like, and I said this when the trailer. When you live in a trailer, you can take your the Super Bowl anywhere. That's true. <laughs> I mean, mobile. what was especially striking is directly behind this little satellite is a sign that says mainstream media with like a big X through it. So <laughs> it's just like it's too much. It's too much. They're going to be listening on a ham radio to the game on Sunday, apparently. Uh, it's, it's not that these guys are super brilliant either. This is from the gel, the Zello chat the other night. I want you to listen very carefully to this. This is from Ryan's feed, at Ryan Lindley. I, I love this group because they tell the truth about everything on the Zello chat, including this guy's chili. Watch this. Guys, Jim here again. Uh, you guys get offered any chili from a guy wearing a red jacket. Do not eat it. I've been stuck in Wendy's bathroom for a little bit, and uh, I don't want anybody else to have to go through this. Was the chili spiked with laxative? I really hope that wasn't intention. I feel like McDonald's should use this as an ad. Hey, they should use this as an ad. As an hey, update. Hey, as a quick uh, quick aside, if you see a guy in a red jacket handing out chili, never fucking take the chili from the guy in the red jacket. <laughs> Don't eat the brown acid. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, Jim's okay. 
everybody. Yeah. Just so you know, we have he heard okay? from Jim. Jim's and? okay now. He's back in He's out of the away. Yeah. Right, good. yeah. But that night that the tow trucks I was telling you about, when they showed up, he was stuck in the shitter. And everybody was concerned about his Jeep. He drives a black Jeep, by the way. Oh, does he? And, good. Yeah. Jim with the black Jeep that has the yeah. poop. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he couldn't get to his car to make sure that the tow trucks didn't tow his Jeep. So I oh. don't know if he got The bowels out, got to him again. You know, that's happened to everybody, right? Where you're all excited Absolutely. to do something and you can't get there because you you're stuck make in a the choice. crapper. Yeah, We've happens. all been in an insurrection and couldn't make it back to our car, right? <laughs> We've all had diarrhea at an insurrection once yeah. or twice in our lives. <laughs> all of us at one point or another. You know what really ruined my insurrection? <laughs> Red coat guy's chili. <laughs> Never again. But, you know, and the fascinating part is that, like, there's a lot of stuff we're not seeing, but I had it on good authority that uh, the police are legitimately uh, visiting people's homes now that are talking about taking out the government and the prime minister. This was a video that was posted today that is all kinds of awesome. Police show up to this lady's house. They inform her they're there because they understand she's going to the protest. And she's like, you guys are on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, since you're at my home, can I just get your name and your badge yeah, number, please? I have a card here. Okay. It's Erica Ingram. Thank okay. you. And this is just some information about peaceful protests. That's all it is. Okay, so you saw something on my Facebook? No, on the Facebook <clears throat> group. Okay, and decided to come to my personal residence to give me information about peaceful protest? Yes. <laughs> okay, so are the Peterborough police, no, you're with OPP? OPP? Um, are you guys now monitoring people's Facebook pages or Facebook groups to who comments as to what their um, uh, status updates are or what they're doing or okay, so within the group? Just like because of the protest happening province-wide, yes, we have been monitoring the protests. Okay. okay. So there's a protest coming up. I'm simply providing you with information about a peaceful protest. And now I'm leaving. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the Ontario Provincial Police are watching what people are doing on Facebook in different groups. Yeah, she whether answered or not that. They're commenting, participating, liking, and you guys are now doing service calls yeah. to that give people information act. about peaceful protest. Yeah, right. It's just a proactive measure to make sure you understand your rights about peaceful protesting. I absolutely. I have Perfect. a copy of the Canadian Charter of Rights Excellent. and Freedoms, so yeah. I'm well within that and, and yeah. very understanding of that. Uh, I appreciate that. I'm okay. I'm hoping that uh, you guys aren't going to waste our tax dollars continuing to do this to everybody, but uh, now it's nice to know that uh, we're we're being watched. So, you have what? any questions? My cell phone number is on the card. Thank you. Okay. Uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did this woman just discover? Did she just discover that? Yeah. That, that Facebook's Say it. public? Say it. <laughs> she just discovered that it's public? Yeah. That it's like that what she puts on the internet, everyone can see. Can Under see? her real name, presumably, since they found her. Oh, can I just? I also want to point out um, that that um, she was oh, she was she was OPP. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so she was very like relaxed and sweet about it, Super and calm sweet. and poised. Yeah. But I would not want her arresting me. I could tell that she would like just yeah. mess me up for sure. Um, She's but smiling through her teeth. Yeah. That's right. Go ahead. And yeah. she wanted to leave. She does not want to be there at all. No. Can you imagine being tasked with that job in the morning at the police precinct where they're like, okay, you got to do 60 houses today of crazy people. Can you imagine that, Karima? No. Seriously. I'd protest that. I would too. I'd be like, yeah. you know what, do I have to? They're like, yeah, you got to go tell. And the reason why they're doing that, and this is what I love about it. The reason why they're doing that is they're saying, we know who you are. We have your address. We have your entire Facebook history. And, and she was shocked that everybody else had it too. <laughs> what she doesn't know, or I don't think she put the pieces together that she's, they think that like, and they do, they think they're in that silo that, and they're, they're locked down. The same thing happens in those Zello chats. That's why I know so much about these complete fucking strangers. Yeah. Just listening to them for the last 24 hours, 48 hours. They think they're really on the, like they're stuck in their own little world. And she must've said something that could have been deemed as a threat. Mm -hmm. It was reported or they saw it. They said, let's look her up. Let's send a fucking message. I guarantee you they only went to like the loudmouths of that Facebook group and 
just to say hi. Like anybody that was like, fuck Trudeau, we need to take him out. Anybody yeah. that said that, see, and this is the thing, that's the world I grew up in. I remember my dad saying to me when I was a kid, because we were British immigrants. Like, we moved here from England when I was a little kid. And he's like, hey, listen, you can be deported at any point in time. <laughs> Like any point in time, if you commit any crimes in this beautiful country, so fucking watch yourself. I'm like, I guess I'm like five. And uh, and the other thing he said was, don't ever threaten a public official in this country. They'll fucking kill you. And I'm like, oh, my God. So now as a 48 year old and you see everybody threatening public officials on a daily basis, it takes my breath away because I didn't grow up like that. Karima. Yep. Right. I also learned at a fairly young age, not to threaten <laughs> anybody. Uh, actually, I was probably, it was after 9-11. So uh, it was sometime in the early 2000s. And I remember cops showing up at my door um, because someone had impersonated my dad um, and threatened to blow up a Tim Hortons. Um, and that was traumatic. Like that was extremely traumatic. Are you serious? And, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't him. My dad. It was not my dad. Who I know it him. wasn't. He didn't know how to Obviously use the computer not, but at that point. You used his name. Um, yeah, so it was, and it ended up being like a prank and just like a very poorly thought out idea. Um, but it was abundantly clear that we do not have the luxury of uh, fucking around in that respect. Right. But these guys do. And that's why I go back to that one thing all the time. The fucking white privilege involved in this entire movement, right? The Judeo-Christian values espoused and the people that they're bringing in to kind of kettle this whole thing. Tell me about this video. I'm going to play it, Karima. This is from a rally uh, that uh, Pastor Henry Hildebrand, this is your video, uh, he had, and Randy Hillier was there. We played it yesterday. I'll play it again. Randy Hillier was there, and Max Bernier was there. Uh, I want to get into this video in just a second and the vibe that was there. It's fucked. By God's grace, we're going to show the population what it means to get back on the foundation. When you pull the foundation out, the house will not stand. By God's grace, I will stand and speak for God as long as I can. God bless you. Amen. You know what I lo- you know what I love about that is how clearly wasted Randy Hillier is when he gets up after. But- I want him to MC everything from now on. <laughs> Just <laughs> fucked, dicked, uh, totally. Yeah. Um. Where, what was that all about? So that was that was a press conference. Um, <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a press conference no, um, and just no, like a minute of backstory on that originally there were two competing <laughs> press conferences supposedly for the same convoy scheduled both at 1 p.m the one that we just saw deferred and moved to 4 p.m um so there's like not unity within this group um and no. yeah hildebrandt took the, the the podium for a few minutes mm-hmm. and the message that I got from what he was saying is, you know, there's there's Bible verses inscribed on, on the Peace Tower in Parliament, and this is a Christian nation, and we've got to return to those roots. Um, and, you know, other pastors who have been slow on the ball and, you know, haven't, haven't stood up for our rights up to this point, like, you got to do that. that. That's essentially what he was saying. And I found it very disturbing. Um, I was sitting kind of in the back um, and just, you know, I was live tweeting as this was happening. Um, and yeah, this idea that we need to return to our Christian roots. Um, like, first of all, the original inhabitants of this land were not Christian. No. Um, and it's such a, like, there's a violence, I think, that is implicit in in what he's saying. Um, and, and I find that very concerning and it aligns quite well um, with a lot of this alt-right sort of white nationalist, uh, pro-Christian. And that's not to say that all of them are Christian. So there's like factions of atheists, there's factions of other religions as well. Um, but in Canada, this is a very dominant trend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's your there's your connecting the dots 
Marianne, like we were talking about earlier, is is what's driving this. And what's driving it is different than who's involved in the collective, right? The collective is, is full of all kinds of people. Actually, it's probably got some good people in it, too. Um, and it's probably got people that are just sick and tired of this shit, but is legitimately driven by that attitude. Like it's legitimately being, and, and, and that's the, that's the funny part is like, I wish they would have just come out and set it to start, right. Instead of hiding it in plain sight, instead of and like you, co-opting an they entire have to hide it in plain sight. Otherwise, right. otherwise people, people are going to be crazy. turned away right at the outset. Right. So <laughs> yeah. that's what makes it so insidious. Look yeah, at, uh, know. look at James's interview with Maxime Bernier. And when he asked him about the religious, uh, aspect of it and he, he deflected it and he answered everything but the question James asked him. It's because they know, they know it's not our foundational belief structure of this country. They know that it's not, they're just, it's, it's trying to seep in and it's trying to normalize it without owning it. They don't own it. So, except for crazy shits like Hildebrandt. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, listen, I, 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 you know, we can encompass, you know, uh, all kinds of things and people and stuff like that. But, you know, the one thing that we don't talk to uh, talk about is the incredible dating scene that's on the ground in Ottawa right now. Uh, Marianne, mm. uh, you've been you've been I, I want to say trolling some of these guys or maybe putting some. Bait I haven't. Even, so I haven't even bothered matching with any of them or swiping right on any of them because. I don't trust it for my right. safety because it's my real name and it's my real pictures. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, but I come across these uh, these Looney Tunes for sure. Um, there's this one guy. I think Dean. I don't know if you have the pictures. Yeah, or not. got them right here. Um, yeah. So this is a lovely wow. man that I ran into um, on the Tinder, fairy man? and I have to give him points because uh, very creative yeah. with his with his profile. Double honksinated. Has to be one of my favorite things I've ever seen. Good. He's actually more, he's put more words in there than most men put in their profiles. So, yeah, uh, I will give him points on that. Always, Always masked, masked up, up, conductor of the symphony of honk, pure blood, pure blood love. Yeah, huge. There's some more in there. There's a picture of them, of him holding some jugs. Yeah. In there right too. Oh. Yeah. Oh, good. So he's been cr like creative, but all of the pictures are like, I don't know. He loses points because all of the pictures are from the protest. I would love to see him hiking. Maybe I'd love to see him <laughs> holding a fish, like anything, anything else. Yeah. Something <laughs> yeah. different. But uh, this is the kind of stuff. So either if it says they're a kilometer away, yeah. if they're here for the weekend yeah. or if they have pictures like this, yeah. it's a big old red flag for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the balaclava kind of doesn't do it. Do, you can't see what the guy looks like with the balaclava on and the, the gas jugs around his neck. But he does like Pennywise. Uh, big fan of Pennywise. Fuck authority. Uh, there he is. Well, I, I thought maybe you were looking forward to meeting these guys because you put this up on Twitter uh, last week as well. The Louis Vuitton Freedom handbag, uh, which is a gas can covered in like uh, American flags and stuff. What, uh, what do you think of So I... I at first I only had the, the eagle on there, but then I yeah. thought with the eagle was holding the Canadian flag. Oh yeah, it would Did really encompass that. In? Yeah, oh, well, yeah. I just used Instagram really yeah. quickly and just put it all together. But I sure. thought it would be a good touch to. For it to, in its claws and its talons yeah. to be holding the Canadian flag. Yeah, you did inside. Uh, yeah, I love it. I I'm shocked. I, I would wonder like how many people were like, "Ooh, I like that." Like in the convoy, <laughs> they're like. Mm. <laughs> Google. Well, because Karima maybe confirmed this, but like there were some women like use it, like pretending like it's our new accessory, it's yeah, our new totally. bag. Are they them. really? Yeah, yeah. There's people like walking around with them, like strapped to their belts, or just kind of carrying it around like a purse. And it's it like so those ones are clearly empty. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of jerry cans. Like everyone, we should have invested in that stock. This is a big <laughs> jerry can operation. Um, do you can you t do you did you ever find out about? There's a picture of the shovels laid out across. Yeah, yeah. What, what was a, that? What, what, yeah, what was that? I, it's I like know. a. It was like an homage I, to Doug Ford because that he used was my the shovel. speculation. They're yeah. trying to summons him. Yeah. So nobody said anything though. Like no, no. Like that that <laughs> wasn't a counter protest <laughs> thing, no. dude. Dude, I, I think people... possibly they were trying to block the road. Um. I, that's sort of my the, mo the yeah. more logical explanation Wouldn't than possibly. trying to summon the demon. Um, <laughs> okay. But I don't, I don't know. And actually, like the one person who was around did not know either. So I, we may never have an explanation for that. It's one yeah. of the mysteries. <laughs> Interesting. Of the 
<laughs> well, listen, I gotta I gotta tell you something. Um, is this is a group that wasn't aware until the police showed up at their house that Facebook was public. <laughs> Actually, like I have a question, video. Karima. Have you have you met any of our new deputy chief of police or constables that have been sworn in? Have you yeah, met the any peace of those officers. today? Uh, I saw Nick Smith getting soup yesterday, um, and I I think that he was in that video where people were getting deputized. And <laughs> you know, I, I really don't think that he has the demeanor um, to be a peace officer. But no. in any event, no, uh, he doesn't. I, I, I have, need it. He I've not anointed. I've not seen Sorry. anyone attempt no. a citizen's arrest and i hope not to because well listen i i, I want to see it <laughs> you don't want to see it but i do this is a video so you you know that where they deputized karen and sophia the other day uh this is another mass um ordainment i think they call it in the group mass ordainment of a whole bunch of other keystone cops in a tent revival last night watch this, this is great you are lawfully empowered to employ other members of the public as peace officers and to detain and arrest anyone you see breaching the public peace. Our goal is to work with the police forces. Right? You so are that? they on, no. they're all cops now? Yeah. They're all Well, no, they're, they're not. Cops? Yeah. No, they think they are though, but they're not. No, I know, I know, but like they like they think they're all like yeah. cops? Cops, yeah. Yes. It's so quite it's that a cop easy? crew. Yeah, that easy that, to be a cop in this group. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you could be anything in this group. Just walk in and go, I want to be a neurosurgeon. And they'll be like, all right, just repeat after me. You're now a neurosurgeon. You know what? Surgery? Not? I'm a, You're not going to break I'm... anything anyway. <laughs> Open heart surgery is the next step in the in the occupation. I can right? see that on yeah. the open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Open mm -hmm. heart. Uh, what do you want to be? Uh, I'd like to be a nuclear physicist. No problem. Repeat after me. You're now a nuclear physicist. <laughs> yes. Have at it. Oh, that's incredible. Thank Let you. Let me call my much. mom. All my dreams are coming <laughs> true in this group. Yeah, I wonder how many of those people are like, I always wanted to be a cop. <laughs> Probably a fair chunk. Probably a fair chunk. I always wanted to be a cop, but my, my lengthy criminal record uh, really got in the way. So thank God I'm now a cop. <laughs> Do you have any experience? But that, yeah, but that meth lab that I ran for 15 years in, in Cochrane, Alberta, really put a, a damper on my cop career. So now I'm a Keystone cop. I'm, I'm actually I'm actually afraid to walk actually closer to it now that they've all been ordained because yeah. I'm like, what if they try to arrest me? Like, what do I even like? What do I even do? I, I go a with mask it. If, if I'm, I'm you, I go with it. I go down there looking to get arrested just to see what the process is. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm a terrible person. Arrest me. Let's go. Where are we going next? You'll probably get taken into that cantina that they built in the Coventry parking lot, and they'll probably just sit you down and, and preach to you about the good word of Jesus and let you go in like 10 minutes. That's jail to them. That Here's would some be chili. Jail to me. Here's some chili. I was just going to say, you're going to meet the guy with the red jacket. And you're gonna get yeah, the guy with the red chili. jacket will give you some chili. You go have the shits, and then you're out. It's like Hail Mary's for your asshole. Anyway, um, Karima, listen, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, always great to see you. Are you going to stick around there this weekend and, and uh, give me a little timeline because because I'm hearing they're going to start moving on things in Windsor either tonight or tomorrow morning, and I'm hearing Ottawa sometime this weekend. Are you hearing the same things? Uh, I haven't. I don't have a source on anything, but if I were to speculate, it would make sense to start Sunday evening um, because I anticipate there's going to be a crowd coming in this weekend, and yeah. it will just you know turn into a shit show. Um, so Marianne? if I were in charge, I would probably start Sunday evening, but it's got to be yeah. quick because, you know, by the time you hit midweek, people are already planning to be here again for the weekend. So sure. Yeah. You want to give them time to cancel those hotel rooms. I don't know. Stuff. I don't know why they just don't go do it now. Like, what? Just go do it now why are you TV? waiting? Yeah. What? What are we waiting for? What a statement that would be eh, for Canada to go. Let's whoop some alt white ass. And let's show the world yeah. what that looks like and that there's no home for that kind of bullshit here. I would love to see that. I would love to see it. It would be a fucking statement for the rest of the world that we don't have that here. We don't do that here. We look at people for the for the equality of the individual. We don't really care about their religion or where they're from. And if they're part of the greater good, we'll stand up for that right forever. Forever. 
Anyway, uh, Marianne Iveson, thank you very much for being here as well at uh, for MA me. on the air. Follow Marianne. She's a lovely human being. And uh, fellas, if you're wearing a balaclava carrying around gas jugs, you got no chance on Tinder with her this weekend, just to <laughs> let you know. Just keep uh, but thanks, Marianne. Really appreciate it. And uh, please follow Marianne. And the name of your website again? Uh, IvisonVoice.com. You'll Iveson find it Voice. on my Twitter, yep. Perfect. And uh, listen, um, Karima is in Ottawa doing the Lord's work. She uh, is not using GoFundMe <laughs> for obvious reasons. How can people do- <laughs> how can people don't or give go send, by the way, mm. uh, how can people donate to you, Karima, to keep you in Ottawa, to keep you giving people the information and the, and the visuals that they need from this thing? If anyone is so inclined, I am taking e-transfers because I have the most control over that. Um, and you can find the information pinned at the top of my my profile on Twitter, karima.sad at gmail.com. And I am grateful for any support. Um, but I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm planning to stick it out and we'll see what happens. So I'll keep you all posted. And we're okay. grateful for your coverage. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Be careful. Canadian hero, Karima Saad. And uh, <laughs> a soon-to-be... Canadian weapon, Marianne Iveson. Thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) Talk to you ladies soon. Talk to you people soon. Is that better? No people. Ladies. Ladies, not people. People, ladies. I was was talking to him before we got on the air. And I'm like, what do I do? Is it people, ladies? Is it, what is it? Girls. Because I'm more afraid of actually addressing, having, yeah, introducing like like our next guest. She's a uh, venerable, one of the greatest music writers to ever come out of this country. She's got a website called Samaritan Magazine, and she's my friend. And uh, please welcome another person, uh, Karen Bliss. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Bliss is in town. Nice to see you. Hi, Karen. What's that? Is this? Yeah. Is this? I... Oh, Can you not hear? We... Just uh, your, your audio is cutting in and out there, kiddo. Ah. Oh, now I got you. Now I got you. You're good. You got I can me? Hear you. Ask me if this is. You can't hear I me? I think it, it might be peaking and it cuts yeah. itself out. Yeah, just chopping. Uh, top lower. Ch- chopping up. Yeah, I think you're okay. I think you're okay. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing all right. Yeah. You caught yeah. this before I was heading out to Ottawa. So glad that you could see before I get <laughs> So, um how you're like what do you convoy channel i think yeah yeah it's kind of become that way it's just we're trying to wade through it right like i i, I think everybody looks at this and they either look away and get on with their lives or they get like overtaken by what's going on because of what it might say about the country all i want to do karen is understand all of it so that i can make a you know an, a, an example out of them you are doing that. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate it. How are you? And uh, how has life been for a, a music writer in the pandemic? Talk to me about this. Oh, you really, you want the truth? Yeah. You can't handle the truth. All right. <laughs> I can't handle the truth. Uh, it's not good. I don't want to come on here and just moan. No, we're not moaning. Honest. It's moaning. But uh, yeah, I don't think people really understand how it affected, you know, peripheral jobs, I guess, in the music industry, right? Like, because there's no touring, advertising was down at a lot of the music publications. Uh, The freelance budgets were cut almost immediately. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been pretty tough. Mm-hmm. And with the way uh, recording works now, that's where you make your money. The bulk of it now is touring and promo and merch and stuff like that. And if you don't have that opportunity, then really, what do you have right now? There's not a whole lot left, right? Yeah, for artists. But, you know, as a self-employed music journalist, um, I, I do write for Billboard, but I am... Uh, the Canadian correspondent, I'm, I'm not employed by them per se. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, haven't had much work. Yeah. Well, it's been tough, right? Like for a lot of people, like it's, it's difficult. And then you, you get to a point where you're like, I need to do something else. Like I need to kind of branch out into, 
an idea that 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 something I want to do or always wanted to do has been important to me. And you did that with Samaritan Magazine. I just want to bring this up. Do you mind if I put this up? This is from the staging site. I know it's been uh, it's being uh, rejigged. You, you got this look. The big staging site. Um, sure. It's not. So this we're currently redesigning yeah. it. Uh, so that's, I would guess, like 80 percent there you'll see that the top is kind of cleaner than the uh the one that's currently up but i've had this for about eight or nine or even ten years mm -hmm. as my side mm -hmm. thing and it's you know definitely a passion of mine um covers just people trying to make a difference and it's very music heavy for obvious reasons. Yeah, but it's music heavy. Then and the one thing I liked about it is is that I know you've been at this for for several years and if you if you haven't if you don't know Karen, she's got such a wonderful reputation in the industry um because of stuff like this. Like you you have this ability to be able to Oh, look at Brenton says hi. Brenton on tour says hi in the comment section. Okay. Yeah, he is. As am I. I think you're wonderful. But but um, one of the things that, that's important to you is giving back. It's helping. But you, I, when you go through Samaritan Magazine, as, as I have, and if, if anybody else out there reads it, um, it's almost like this positive break from the mung that we're involved in uh, on a daily basis. The focus on, you know, good people doing good things, making the world a little bit of bit better around you how did you come up with the idea for Samaritan Mag and what's the what's the goal because if you haven't read it and I strongly encourage everybody to go and check it out we'll give you all the details in the description um I, I just would love to know more about it and what the focus and the goal is because I think it's such a great idea well I actually do say that it's not a good news site it's actually shitty news so it's good people trying to change the shitty things because we cover animal rescue and cancer and, you know, lack of clean water and poverty and, you know, those types of things. So those are shitty. Um, and it's also, it's not me doing the good things. It's me writing about people doing good things. So this was my way in uh, my world of giving back because I'm not a doctor. I can't build, you know, a school. I'm not wealthy, um, so this was a way that, yeah, I could contribute in some way. I also have, like, this great job interviewing musicians and going to concerts for a living, so that's the other reason why I started it. And also, at that time, there were, you know, TMZ was starting out and yeah. uh, Perez Hilton, and they were slamming people, and Perez was drawing penises on people's faces and you know they would write about someone that has cellulite at the beach or you know some actor that went to the grocery store and looked like crap and and I was like come on like there must be people that don't care about that so that was the reason I started it really yeah J just to put some reality back into uh, you know the writing of these people was it was it like an answer to Perez Hilton is that why he started it uh, like uh, just an answer to people shitting on each other yes it was I call it my <laughs> well also I would have friends in the Canadian music industry that would go on these amazing humanitarian trips with say War Child and they'd come back with these you know life-changing stories really and i would pitch them to the outlets that i worked for and no one cared and that's the truth and i don't know if that's really changed you know mm -hmm. what like no one cared about the good work that was being done uh by by celebrities and people that were normally being talked about poorly is that well, what you're talking that, about the outlets that i wrote for didn't have the space or interest in me writing about, you know, um, red wine from rascals going to Sierra Leone and learning about blood diamonds and uh, child soldiers and that kind of thing. And that was new to me too at that time. That was many, many years ago. Uh, and it was the first time I had, I had heard about that, you know, like he, he met children with amputated limbs from the, from, you know, the rebels there. So, yeah, I would pitch a story like that to some of the outlets that I worked for and they weren't interested. Well, I, I know that to be true because of the analytics, uh, you know, in this job. Right. You know that 
what's going to get people's attention um, and what's not. And I often say to people, you know, I could put a video of Pinocchio violating a cartoon horse up and it would get more people uh, looking at it, watching it, engaging with it than like a dissertation on why children shouldn't be used in war torn countries as props or uh, during protests as props. Why is that? Like, is it a conditioning thing? Do you think? Is it a social media thing? You've been a writer and one of the best in the world for a long time. Um, why is it that we're drawn to car wrecks and not good deeds? I think you need a doctor on here to answer that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm equipped to answer such a question. Just like I can't make sourdough bread. There's just some things I just have no answer for. But you know, I do feel that there's a segment of the population that cares about, um, you know, the Kanye's trying to get Kim back. And then there's a segment of the population that, you know, is sort of inspired by seeing other people make a difference, you know. And, and the thing with this um, uh, ma online magazine is I never imagined the stories that we've been able to cover like there's just people that are so passionate um that knit blankets for dogs and cats in shelters um that do uh like henna tattoos for women who have lost their hair you know from chemotherapy like there's just so many things that i didn't even know existed you know what what's blown your mind like a story or two where <clears throat> through Samaritan Magazine, Karen Bliss uh, joins us. Uh, she is a uh, one of Canada's best writers, music writers as well. She uh, oh, runs thanks. and owns. What's that? Let's let's tone it down a little. No, I'm not one of the best writers. I'm a writer. You're a great writer. Thanks. You're one of my favorite Every writers. Okay, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> but Samaritan Magazine, good people trying to change bad things. Uh, Samaritan Magazine is 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 it like? When you source these stories, have you been shocked by some of the the goodwill that you've seen certain people, like people that you've been shocked that, oh, my God, they've got this incredible streak inside them that's so kind or anything that's really blown your mind over the past eight, nine years that you've had Samaritan Magazine? I mean, the one thing with the magazine, and I know this is going to sound strange, but I kind of position it as a magazine for hypocrites. Because it's not, if, if you went through my, my garbage bin, my recycle bin, you're going to find stuff in there that I probably haven't thrown away properly. I don't want the site to be intimidating. This is just for that. Go through their lives. They have their jobs and they want to make a different, like make some small impact. They're not like living like this amazing philanthropic life. Like some people we write about do, of course, but this is just for your everyday person that, you know, maybe they'll find something that, you know, there's been parrot rescues and pig rescues and horse rescues and donkey rescues. So maybe that's their thing. Even rat rescues in Ottawa. Oh, in Ottawa. See, everything comes full. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got, um, I've got a question. It's kind of more of an assumption, and I'm wondering if, if I'm right. Do you find it's easier to find stories during times of peril like we're in now with the pandemic and all this crap that's been going on for the last two years? Do you find it? Do you find more stories pop up during times like this, or do you find it's well, less? Shortage of stories, I have to say. And but I but when COVID started, it was overwhelming. Um, I just couldn't keep up, you know, I don't have a staff and there just, everyone was doing some kind of charitable concert or effort. And I just could not cover it all. Now it's gone back to, you know, kind of normal, manageable. Um, I still can't cover everything that I get pitched, you know, like I, mm -hmm. I do hope that one day I have a staff and I'm able to cover more. Um, also, we do cover businesses that, you know, either have a product where a portion of the proceeds go to charity or they have some kind of platform. And I know sometimes it 
it doesn't get me into trouble, but like people look at that quite negatively, the big corporations that are, you know, giving money to a cause because they think it's just, you know, a PR move or a tax thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, look at Bell Let's Talk that gets a lot of flack. Um, they have pledged like I, I've over a hundred million dollars, I believe over, I think 15 years, but uh, George Cope, who was then CEO, he chose mental health as the cause because of his mom, because of her uh, mental health issues. So I do feel there's always individuals at these corporations, and there's always a reason why they've chosen to support whatever. You know, if, if someone's not into that aspect, they don't have to come to Smeritimag. There's other outlets and other publications that are more suited and narrow focus. But this is really just a general publication about individuals um, trying to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It, and it's it is. It's a it's a great publication and it's a great site, too, because <laughs> And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to feel like a dick when I say it, but when I go on it, I'm like, I don't do nearly enough for anybody else. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Hey, I honestly yeah. feel this. What do I do? I'm just writing about people that are, you know, doing something good. I have had the opportunity uh, to go to El Salvador to volunteer at an orphanage, and that was an incredible experience. I went back twice. Um I would love to go again. Uh, yeah, you got to find that thing, right? Yeah. I'm sure yeah. you do good. I'm sure you shovel your neighbor's nope. snow or are nope. going to eat or something like nope. that. Bad back. Um, no, no bad back. <laughs> yeah, bum knee. <laughs> yeah. No. I, 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 she, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm in a... a a cool position because as a music journalist and interviewing all these artists, um, they usually, even when they're starting off their career right off the bat, a lot of the labels or management will, um, you know, find out what their interest is and, and pair them with a cause. And that's mm -hmm. quite common for, you know, an artist to have something that's, you know, associated with them. Mm -hmm. Who, uh, Karen Bliss, uh, music writer, joins us. Um, best interview you've ever done. You've interviewed everybody. Ever? Interview ever. Yeah. Best interview. Okay. Favorite best. Oh. Like, where you, you, you gotta, you gotta take one interview with you to the grave. What is it? Who is it? Okay. Well, this is kind of funny, and anyone can go online and look this up because I actually resold the story maybe four or five years ago, Eddie Vedder. And this is going to age me, date me, whatever. But um, <laughs> it was Pearl Jam 10. I knew that album like the back of my hand. I had seen them play in New York during CMA. And, you know, they hadn't taken off yet or it was just starting to. And I just did what I feel was a great interview with, with Eddie over the phone. And it's funny, too, because if you find it, um, he's talking about how he doesn't like tattoos. And then I say some pretty weird things to him as well. And uh, <laughs> anyway, end of the interview, he was like, oh, if you need anything else, let me know, you know. And then I've never interviewed him again. Yeah. Because he <laughs> big and he doesn't really do a lot of interviews. So if he's watching this listening eddie eddie Ed karen wants Ed an interview pick up the phone, pick up the but phone as eddie. far as the people that i love that i would love to interview yeah. uh Keith richards is my ultimate ultimate favorite everyone knows that yeah oh nice yeah you're a big uh, keith richards uh person every time we talk we talk about keith richards for some reason <laughs> like it's um, you know, and then Springsteen, of course, and Bob Dylan and Neil Young and Mick. Is that asking too much? No. So, yeah. <laughs> Seems fair. Did you, have I, you heard, sorry, have you heard Eddie's new song, Earthling? Have you heard it? I haven't. I should huh. say I have, though, because then maybe he's listening. He's like, oh, like, she loves me and, and she hasn't <laughs> even heard the song yet. 
but you know, I have had a tough week. <laughs> yeah, I know you have. Um, yeah, it's great. I, I listened to his soul. He's got a solo project called Earthling. Um, I heard a snippet from 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 his new project the other day, and it's all Eddie. I mean, you just it's Eddie. Eddie's Pearl Jam, and I know I love all the guys in Pearl Jam, but Eddie's Pearl Jam, right? Well, Springsteen just freaking sat down with him, so mm -hmm. it's only. Dan Hill now, like what he's gonna go from Bruce to me, Bruce to Bliss? I don't think so, but <laughs> that's got a ring to it. So, um, what do you make of the Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, Spotify, Ro J Joe Rogan business? I'd love your thoughts. Oh man. Um, well, let's let me say good for Neil. Neil always stands up for what he believes in, you know, and it did bring more attention. Um, you know, and I do think that Joe needs to be reined in a little, you know, like it, it, just because you have a podcast, you have to have some sense of responsibility on who your guests are and, and you need to challenge them. So if they're coming on spouting all this nonsense, you know, unproven uh, medical information uh, and racist uh, views, if you're not challenging them and you're just leaving it, then yeah, I think that should be taken down. You know, we don't need more of that stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of different than some of the other artists that have removed their songs from Spotify. And that's more a monetary thing and fair value for uh, what they do for a living and, you know, placing the value on music. So um, yeah, everyone has that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I found it. I, I found it wild, right? Because Neil Young was such like an anti-establishment guy when he was younger. Um, you know, FTW, and I know this is a different kind of FTW that we're talking about, <clears throat> but he was always very anti-establishment, and this is a very anti-establishment movement right now. You know what I mean? And I, uh, and and I found it cool and odd at the same time. But I think the cool part was. Uh, you know who led the charge against disinformation and the bullshit? We're two Canadians, right? Well, we have our own bullshit here, as you <laughs> as you know. And yeah. the the interesting thing for me is the people that are believing the bullshit are the people that proudly, you know, I got rid of my cable. I don't watch the news because it's negative, you know, those types of views. So they get their news and their facts from memes and from Instagram and YouTube. And I always That's say, no, it's actually negative not to be informed and not to watch the news. That is neg negative. It's not negative to watch it, you know, I also find it insulting when they want all the the mainstream media together and if you know I know I just write about but I'm also an industry a trade writer and tells me what to write like we and my friend I have fellow journalists that are hard news journalists and write about real stuff it's a lot of work to be an investigative reporter there's a lot of fact checking mm -hmm. the major of legal departments um, I've been working on something that no one knows about that's taken me about a year and um, it's a lot of work and a lot of fact checking and when that thing comes out it's going to be because it's been thoroughly thoroughly vetted so uh, yeah it's just like I find it very insulting to journalists and what they do for a living that they think we're all just puppets mm -hmm. um, you I made a great point you made a, a great point, and I want to expound on that because it kind of bleeds into something we talked about earlier, which is, you know, the the broad paintbrush that everybody paints MSN with. There are human beings legitimately trying to do their best work, right? There are a lot of people out there that are trying to make some money, that are trying to create content, and they happen to work for these companies. But um, in, in, in terms of, of, you know, the pride that you have in the job that you've done or whatever title it, it comes with as a writer. Um, when did, when did you see it change? Like, when did you see the, cause 
like I, there was a level of respect for people that did that job, right? I, I, in the United States, freedom of the press is like, I think it's in the Constitution. You can do whatever you want if you're in the press. You can walk into a war zone with a hat, like a bowler hat with a thing on a little thing that says press, like they did back in the day, and no one would touch you, right? Mm-hmm. But um, as, as someone who, you know, reports on public discourse, um, when did you see this kind of start to change in, and has it affected your industry specifically? So I would say primarily it's when uh, Donald Trump started with the fake news refrain Mm. again, some very well respected, incredible journalists that are on the ground that do their research where there's a code of ethics. Of course, sometimes there's going to be factual errors, you know, like that's just in life. That's just in any job. But uh, yeah, that just kind of silliness was ridiculous. But I also find it quite funny. Um, And I have remarked on it, all these people that like, oh, mainstream media, hate mainstream media. Well, they're still pitching me to write about their little band, you know, like, Mm. when is it okay? Like, when is mainstream media okay? And when is it not okay? You know? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's that's the thing is like <clears throat> it's just weaponized, right? Like, and, and and we live in this time when people will weaponize. Um, like, I got I got vaccine. I've got like three of them coursing through my veins. I love it. I've got so many vaccines. If, Actually done telepathically, right? Like our yeah. through our five network right now. Exactly our five G. Yeah, well, you and I talked for three hours this morning without picking up the phone. Super. I know. Yeah, breakfast. Yeah. Uh, so. No, but I, I'm like, I'm like triple vaccinated. Uh, I understand it all. I get it all. I'm not, uh, you know, and, 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 and I understand what's at stake here. But like, I watched this dude the other day, um, Kid Carson. Do you know who he is? He's a, a radio guy in Vancouver. Oh, yes. I know what happened. Yeah. I just yeah. read about it. Where he, he let all, out all the crazy on the air. Like it was like, here's all the crazy. Uh, suck it. And he got fired like that day. It just was about kids being, you know, ID'd with QR code, just all the same QAnon stuff. And and th- there was a time when, you know, the pride in your job and uh, the, the, the people that you worked for, you did that job for them. You and I are from the same school. We're relatively the same age. Uh, back when traditional media was nothing else. Yeah, we're, you know, you're, you do, we're the same age. Uh, but you just look better and younger. Sorry. Uh, but but like you, you, we come from the school where, you know, there was accountability there, right? Like if you remember when when we had this, you cannot call someone a racist in print or at all unless they are legitimately a racist. But yeah. it's like fucking you can call anyone a racist and there's no recourse anymore. You can call someone a homophobe. There's no recourse. Anymore. It is like the dumbing down and the go ahead. There is in mainstream media. So that's the irony, because there are a code of, of of ethics and we have to follow them like i cannot call someone a racist you know i can put in quotes racist views if they said such a thing but you know we have to be very very careful the people that can spout that are the bloggers and the people that don't have that kind of accountability and mm-hmm. one thing i hate having factual errors in my articles. Like right. I'm crazy the way I like fact check things. And when you interview someone, what's quite interesting when you go back and you transcribe, I have a way of being able, like I can go and go, well, that doesn't make sense because you said this, but what about this? And then I'll email management or the publicist or sometimes the artist and I'll go, you said this, but that doesn't make sense. And I'll go, oh, sorry, I meant did instead of didn't or oh i meant this instead of that so you know sometimes it's the person you're talking to that gives you that information that's wrong right so yeah but it's like one of the things that i've that i watch for and it's and it's and it's not that it bothers me because i'm fairly liberal with the you know the, the the language that i use but if i use language like that i bring receipts with me i'm like here's why i said what i said it's it's full on like I got called a pedophile all week by the trucker convoy and I'm like I don't come from a world where this is okay so we're suing their faces off 
um, which I'm really excited for because that'll uncover a bunch of other stuff. It's kind of like a process for me. But that's where I'm from. I'm from that time when if someone says something about you to hurt your reputation, which was totally untrue, or if someone invented a story or invented details, um, you got in trouble for it, Karen. It feels like it doesn't exist anymore. All you need to do is throw up a retraction and you're good. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, all I know is I have deep respect for legitimate journalists doing their job and trying to get the facts out to people. I'm insane with, you know, reading everything. So like when COVID started, reading about like the history of the vaccines, you know, and that the MDA yep. decades ago. Um, how that evolves and i would always, i would look that up like i read everything so i'm pretty confident in my decisions and my views um it's unfortunate that a lot of the people that um are kind of spouting the misinformation are uh, as i said people that don't watch the news uh and um yeah, at the same time, they're the same people that are putting stuff in their lips and stuff in their face. And, you know, they don't ask about what's in that or it's like, oh, I'm going to look better. Thank you. Or maybe in some cases look worse, but you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, but they don't care about any of that, you know, like some beauty treatment. Yeah. Oh, I've got a new beauty treatment. Come in, get this laser thing, get this stuck in your, you know, injected in your face. And it's like, sure. But I'm not going to get the vaccine, you know, like. <laughs> make no Has it been hard for you not to write about this as a and it, like, you know how they tell me they tell sports guys stick to sports? Uh, has it been hard <laughs> to stick to music? Uh, you must not be on my Facebook. Um, <laughs> all through the. Can I, do I have to call it a Trump error? Yeah, I was very yeah, vocal. People know my views. Um, I'm trying not to get sucked in anymore because I, and I, and I'm kind of like this in my personal relationships now. It's like, I have no uh, bandwidth, no brain space. If after a year and a half, two years, you still have those views, I just, I, I don't care. I have no, I can't do it anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I sent mm -hmm. links to singers that are anti um, vaccine where there's been studies on how getting COVID can affect your voice. I mean, that's your freaking career and you don't care. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and then sometimes I just tell someone they're being foolish. Like, like really you've, had all these vaccines before you get your Botox, you get this, that, and you're not getting a vaccine on principle, you're not going to be able to travel. You're not going to be able to go to concerts. You're not going to be able to go into, you know, restaurants. Even still do, actually. I don't know how. There's restaurants that are allowing people in. There's people with fake passports. And I find that disrespectful as well. So, you know, definitely a group. Why am I going? I'm going. You've made me go on a rant. It's what I do. <laughs> Karen, it's what I do. Uh, I like to get that out of people. I like ant world or something. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I rest out now. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, well, it's just, it's, it's funny, right? Because like, I, as, as someone who does what we do, I'll look at the front page of our website and I'll go way too much dirge about the, pandemic way too you know what i mean like there's and when you do this uh every day and we were talking about it with uh karima and marianne who were on just prior to you uh we were talking about the toll that it takes when you know it's different for just general people that that let's say you're an accountant you come home you catch up on the news on the news and then you go home i'm wired like you where it's like okay what is this and how much can i read about it so i can completely understand every side of this so that i don't go out there half cocked acting like an asshole or you know i don't give away any um part of my principles by putting up a lie and having someone go you do this for a living you fucking idiot like get it right uh we put up a picture the other day that uh, or a video the other day that was dubbed and it was put up i was on the air and didn't know what had happened as soon as we saw it we took it down because we weren't too sure that's how and it had like 
and I'm like, I was consternated because I was like, holy fuck, like 40,000 people have looked at this. I don't think I can take it down. It's too viral. And I took it down. <laughs> I took it down because it was was it wasn't accurate, right? And so you deal with that part of it. But when you write this stuff and you're in it all the time and you have conversations with people, then you go home and you write it again and then you research it again. How did you during the past couple of years, how did you sort of protect your mind from it um being in the industry and being a journalist? I mean, I don't have an outlet to write about that. And and in fact, it's kind of frustrating for me sometimes like I'm the one that watches those like two hour news conferences and I wait for the journalists to ask the questions of the politicians like today. And, you know, when I hear people like say things like, well, what about this? What about this? I'm like, I know that they weren't watching those news conferences because those journalists do ask those questions, you know? Um, there was someone today that, that said of the, of the minister of health, like, you know, what do you say to those people that don't trust the government, don't trust what you're saying? You know, they ask the right questions. So I I just have no other outlet. But for me, if I was in politics, I would be hiring some advertising firm to put together little memes with all those stats on and throw them up on Instagram because the people that don't watch the news share those Instagram memes. So that's the way... <laughs> those people that <laughs> don't give a shit about the news, right? Or yeah. politics never voted and just they're going by what they're seeing, you know, their lack of freedom because they can't go get, you know, a facial or something or travel. Um, so like that is where I would be putting my advertising dollars over over there. But for, for that me, might be the only way we get to these people. Meme news. I'm the one it's how that we consume everything now some meme that has like all these statistics i immediately go onto snopes or i google to see if it's correct you know whether it's like those quotes that you know keanu reeves has like apparently said <laughs> like yeah he, he didn't say that or if it's a whole list of all these statistics about the ukraine and i'm like is that true yeah it's not true like people just share shit and it's amazing that they don't trust mainstream media, but they proudly post some stupid meme like from your cousin, you know, As if <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, uh, it, it, it is. You just touched on something that is, I think, the bane of every somewhat intelligent person's existence is the idea that you're going to take medical advice from a meme on Facebook and not your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? I got nothing. I got yeah, no. Yeah, really. Can, can I can I go back to something you? I think we kind of we got into some, we rolled into something, but I want to know: Are you able to give us any details on this? Um, you almost teased us a bit there with something that you've been working on for like a year. I cannot. Nothing at all. Not even no. just a little bit, little no. taste. All no. I can say is um, it's horrifying. It's been giving oh. me nightmares, and I'm not joking. Okay. Um, it's a very a difficult story, and it's probably my most important story. And uh, it might ostracize me, and I'm not joking. Anyway. Okay. I that's not part of the good news. I thought it was going to be. See, now Never I want to dig even more. Yeah. See what you did. Yeah. <laughs> Karen, it's how I'm wired. No, <laughs> I'm not going to do it because I like you and you're my friend. But I just want to dig even more. Yeah. <laughs> uh well listen um i i want to thank you for spending some time with us today and introducing you to our people and talking about samaritan magazine uh when when is the new version of samaritan magazine supposed to be uh up and online and how can people find it right now oh you asked the tough questions um okay so yeah we are in transition um i'm still posting stories like every day hopefully um the new site i hope will you have to migrate it it's a little complicated um but i hope in the next month or two i am crucially looking sponsors advertisers can put your logo in you can sponsor a page a writer i really need uh financial support to keep this thing going and 
I am going to actually, against my better judgment, going to try and go on TikTok. <gasps> um, what, do, what do the kids do to talk about the news stories? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's just I, a thought on some way of getting out, you know, mm -hmm. word about Samaritan. Um, I'm great at writing, editing, sourcing, pitching. I'm not very good at the business side or promoting. So that's why we're here. That's why we're talking about. Yeah. And I know we've been talking to you about me doing a podcast, which uh, are we allowed to talk about that? Yes, for you? please. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, which is my dream scenario, uh, kind of like a politically incorrect off the record type of music industry topical. Uh, I love it already. Mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> that's it <laughs> so yeah uh yeah uh, karen bliss and her podcast will be coming very soon and uh we're lucky enough to be able to uh and eddie, help her eddie is eddie gonna be guest. <laughs> first yeah. guest first interview eddie vetter is what we're gonna try and get done but uh karen bliss is a venerable music writer and one of my favorite writers and a tremendous individual as well uh please go to samaritanmag.com right now and check it out it is uh samaritanmag.com that is it right there that is the site uh, and if you are looking to get involved in a project financially that gives good news to people, that shares great stories about people that are trying to make a difference around this world, uh, please go and get a hold of Karen at Samaritan Mag. Uh, how can people find you and email you if they're interested in not just you know the business of this, but being involved in something that's actually uh, there to help people understand how life works properly? Uh, I'm very easy to find, honestly, but all the contact information is on SamaritanMag.com. So uh, there's probably like four emails that are listed. So pick one. I will respond. Uh, I could do with all the help, honestly. If anyone out there is listening and you're like a social media marketing whiz or you've got deep pockets or you're a writer or, you know, hit me up, man. I need, I need some help. Yeah, uh, awesome. and, and that's the the most honest way to do this is that, uh, listen, if you want to get involved in writing, you want to get involved in the business of digital media, and you want to get involved with one of the most uh, value-oriented people I know uh, and uh, someone who uh, knows more people and knows more about this business than most, uh, make sure you get in touch with Karen Bliss. Go to SamaritanMag.com, check it out, and look for her uh, contact information there, and then make sure you get in touch with her. I'm going to go do the same thing, but I'm going to sign you up for a whole bunch of spam lists. <laughs> Excellent. And, and I'm, am I meeting you guys now to head to Ottawa? You got some hot yeah, chocolate? Yeah, yeah, we'll meet. <laughs> Hong Kong. <laughs> Yeah. 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 We'll meet you. We'll go to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not. They're they're taking it down. Apparently, uh, the kids play structure. From my understanding, Ryan. Uh, what uh, do you know? Yeah. Actually, there's a there's a, some breaking news, and I think the uh, rookie put something in the assets there from Justin Trudeau. Okay. Uh, released a tweet at uh, four o'clock. There it says, "Make no mistake, the border cannot and will not remain closed. Every option is on the table." So if you're participating in these illegal blockades that are taking our neighborhoods and our economy hostage, it's time to go home especially if you have your kids with you. And that last line is ominous. That's, a, well, that's an ominous line. Hey, listen, next step, next yeah. step, look out, you know, and uh, it's a, operation. That's a, wipe that ass. It's pretty coming much. Up. The, so yeah, I, Not don't going now? I don't think we're going to Ottawa now. No, so much for our concert. Going. Yeah, the, the cops are moving in and out. This is just breaking, too. Brian Perry says, breaking Chief Justice granted the injunction pertaining to the blockade of the American Bridge. Protesters have till 7 p.m. to clear, or there's going to be some ass whoopings. Just say, just before we wrap up, that yeah. if this was in, you know, a protest by Indigenous people, Black people, it would not have gone on this long. They would have moved in. They would have been handcuffing people. They would have been tear gassing people. And that is a freaking fact. We've been saying yeah. that all week. You're right. You know what I love about you is that you use your white privilege uh, to, to help help educate people. No, I'm serious. So like there aren't very many white people out there going, we have a real white privilege problem. And because that's all I see in this, right? I said that this morning. I don't know if you saw the picture of the kids being used as a human shield or blockade in front of the actual bridge the other day. Uh, I see you shaking your head, Karen, but like 
it, it's it's incumbent upon white people which make up the majority of this country to call that what it is, right? It's the abuse of the white privilege that these people have. Because what Karen said, 100% right. These people come down from Wet'suwet'en. Uh, they come down from any other reserve and they say, hey, we, we want our rights and freedoms. They are kettled. They are. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great point. Karen, thank you. Appreciate it. Always good to see you, my dear. It was great meeting you, Karen. Hello. Did she freeze? Oh, oh you thank oh, you, you so much. It was great to see you. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, well, there she. <laughs> I thought that was the first me. one. Because you know, we were having a here. huge, huge storm here, and uh, it knocked my internet out. That's where I went. I'm actually on my hotspot spot now. Yeah. Are you on the hotspot? The HP. Yeah, I had I had to move to the cellular because uh, my 5G. My I did click in my my vaccination chip to get better internet because our actual house internet's gone. Well, thank you for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't want to leave um, you hanging. I didn't want that one. And I, I wanted and actually, that I was, Go ahead. Yeah, I was really, uh, really enjoying Karen's uh, conversation. That was really She's crazy. awesome. Yeah. yeah and no the kidding. Karen Bliss podcast will be coming to DeanBlundell.com in the next month or two, I think. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah. She's awesome. She's one of the... Uh, she's humble. She's one of the best music writers ever. Yeah. <laughs> everybody knows who she is. She's interviewed everybody. Yeah. Only I was going to ask, ask her who her worst one was without naming them, just to give us the details. It- we what we want to do is we want to slow uh, slow that relationship down, so we don't lead with something that makes you not want to come back. I know. That's it's just why a little I didn't thing. Ask that, it. That's why I love you. <laughs> I want to get to this Trudeau statement again. Justin Trudeau yeah. put this out on Twitter. Just uh, Jesus, what an hour and one minute ago. Yeah. Um, make no mistake, the border cannot, will not remain closed. Every option's on the table. So if you're participating in these legal blockades that are taking our neighborhoods, our community economy hostage, it's time to go home, especially if you have your kids with you. Fuck yeah. That's an ominous ending, you know, like. Especially if you have your kids with you. Yeah. They will start whooping that ass tonight at seven at the Ambassador Bridge. That is the word I have. Uh, and at some point uh, this weekend, they've already started. This is kind of breaking news. They've already started to pull down uh, the play structures, all the kids shit in Ottawa. The police are like they're just walking up and grabbing it because they're trying to clear the deck. So um, we're going to see some action this weekend. What it looks like, I don't know. But from a personal perspective, I'll say this. I hope they make an example out of the alt-right movement. I really do. I hope I we as a country stand up to alt-white supremacy. And I hope that whatever this looks like um, is a warning for anybody that thinks the color of their skin or the religion that they're involved in is any more important than the person that lives next door to you. That's you're right. Mean. Yeah, your rights and uh where my uh, my rights begin and that's the way this should have been looked at and we have like you say it's 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 perfectly said it's an example it's an opportunity to set an example it's an opportunity to nip this in the bud before we become the 52nd state the way they operate sometimes yeah we don't want that that's not what canada's about it never has been our values have never ever aligned when it comes to uh that sort of division and segregation and 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 it's it's not something that we well, it's, it's the idea here. that that a that a certain group can set the tone for the masses it's an idea that like a the certain group that is using children as fucking human shields can tell us that we're wrong yeah. and that we 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 have to live like them we mm-hmm. don't have to one of the things that fucking drove me crazy though today is I was watching Fordsy. Mm-hmm. Uh, is he? He's gonna. He's he's actually gave a little hat tip to this crowd during his press conference where he said that they're gonna look at getting. Uh, someone asked him, "You getting rid of mandates?" There's a video of you rolling around that you're gonna get rid of mandates, and he ignored the question. After he ignored the question, he then passed that football over to fuckface McGee, uh, <laughs> Moore, Kieran Moore, or Kieran Moore, yeah. And uh, he said it's up to him. And the goal is that he's going to drop the mandates. Now, I'm going to play this for you. It's from Rebel News. So it grosses me out. But they've got audio of Doug Ford uh, saying as much. I think this is from last week. It was a recorded conversation that is illegal to record. uh, But they put it up so they get all the liability. So I'll just play it. Um, By the way, Rebel News run by some of the biggest cocks on the planet. These guys are not news. They're just cocksuckers. They're just alt-right 
opportunistic cocksuckers. Play the Ezra call. Levent, <laughs> cocksucker. Um, David Menzies, cocksucker. cocksucker. Anybody reporting Brian or Lilly, working for that shithole, cocksucker. Cocksucker. Just all cocksuckers. Anyway, this is uh, Ford talking about getting rid of the mandates. A little hat, a little nod, because they won today. If you don't know, ask wink. me, it's fucking yep. group one with this. Please get your messages, and I'm, I got about 250 as of lunch today. Yeah, I'm gonna make this quick because I gotta get uh, no worries. Moving on this, uh, we're, we're pulling these passports. We're gonna get back to normal, and uh, you know I can't give you the exact date, uh, but it's gonna be very soon. Okay. Okay. No. Nope. Gonna be speaking uh, over the next few days. Friday, you're gonna put out a statement. Monday, I'll be giving some dates. And we're going to uh, move forward. Okay, thanks okay. a lot. Okay, appreciate thanks. it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, so this was last week, and if you heard him there, he's like, "We're get, we're pulling the mandates. We're gonna, we're gonna make the announcement Friday, and then we're gonna do some more work on Monday." So today's announcement didn't have that because that video was leaked. And so what Ford does is, when something gets leaked, he'll hold it back. Yep. And we're gonna hear next week that all the police officers that were told they can't come to work will be allowed to come back to work. And the reason why is Doug's son-in-law is a police officer. Uh, the mandates, and uh, this is all happening next week. You can take it to the bank. Uh, mandates for eating out, uh, going into businesses will be pulled. Uh, they won't be mandatory. So, uh, But he is going to allow businesses to make up their own rules in their own mind about how they're going to be checking people's passports and that kind of stuff. So, so effectively, the government measures will be completely taken off and they will be sh- the, the responsibility of keeping the public in this country safe will fall individually on business owners who will then also get all the blowback from all the anti-vaxxers who are currently blocking the border and, and occupying Ottawa uh, because it's not illegal anymore. Right. So, fuck, it just like everything I heard today from him was about him and what's in it for him. It's all and- about this election. And the sadness that all of his kids are fucking Cracker Jack QAnon weirdos. Like Cracker Jack QAnon weirdos. Like his daughter, who's with the fucking convoy. That's why they're telling everybody to get out. That's why he gave them the lead time today. Because he said, we're coming in. The federal government's coming in. We're coming in. Krista, H train, get out. (laughs) What about the kids, Doug? Don't worry about the kids. Krista. (laughs) Get out. We need to make money again. Yeah. Not, we don't need to repair everything. And, 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 and uh, I, I'm sick of it too. I just, this governance by uh, Twitter leaks and opinion polls right. are, it, is disgusting. And this, it's why it, it, you're right. Politics. It's, I don't know. Hate them all. Um, it's going to be a show to watch this weekend though. Cause the, yeah. the, the people that, that they think, one are still not going to go anywhere. They they want one hundred percent nothing, like like as if uh, COVID never happened. That's the way they want to act. And even when we do start repealing these, it's not going to be repealed in a day. Um, it's still going to be a slow roll down. It's just not. He's he's just buying time. He's buying time with these oh, announcements. Yeah, just trying to get his kids out of the convoy. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, get the his volley. kids out of the cult. The volley with the fucking prime minister and the feds and and that, like it, it kills me like it, you're right it's like a hot potato yeah and who's gonna like wh- throw who's it over standing? there yeah. let him do it i don't want to do it like that. cowards we're we're governed by we're fucking governed cowards. by cowards you're right you're absolutely yeah. right all right that's it for us governed by cowards is a great way to end this show as well as i i think we should probably end with the video of the, the i think we should probably end of the video of the lady having the police show up at her house because she just realized that she committed terrorism on Facebook, and Facebook is not private. Have a great day, everybody. That is Ryan Lindley, Sheeple Shepherd. I am Dean. Uh, don't Love forget you, to sign up for a newsletter. Love you, too. Sign up for a newsletter at DeanBlundell.com. Uh, thanks to Ed's Fine Imports, Easy Auto Financial, and our friends at Domination. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Watch out. It's coming. Bye. Sorry, since you're at my home, can I just get your name and your badge yeah. number, please? I have a card here. Okay. It's Erica Ingram. Thank okay. you. And this is just some information about peaceful protests. That's all it is. Okay. So you saw something on my Facebook? No, on the Facebook <clears throat> group. Okay. And decided to come to my personal residence to give me information.